there's three basic pillars to Lent, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Today I'm going to focus on the pillar of fasting. Fasting is giving something up, is what we often refer to it as. A lot of times Catholics will say, I'm giving something up for Lent. That's a form of fasting. But the question is, why do we fast? What's the point of fasting? Well, in response to that, the first thing I'd say is that there's a biblical warrant for fasting. We see it in the book of Genesis when God gives Adam the command to refrain from eating of the fruit of the tree. It wasn't because the tree was bad, that it was harmful or something like that, but rather the point of this fast was for Adam to recognize that he's submissive to God to have that properly ordered relationship with God where you recognize that God is God and I'm not God, I'm a creature, and therefore I'm under God. So part of our fasting is about setting things in their proper order. When we think about this, when we fast, we're usually fasting from material goods. And the reason we're doing that is because we're creating a proper order. That is to say, we're putting spiritual goods ahead of material goods. So the point of fasting is to say, hey, yes, there are goods in this world, and they are indeed good. But if I focus solely on these goods, I'm missing a bigger picture because there are things that are more important than the goods of this world, namely the spiritual goods. And so by fasting, by refraining from certain material goods, we put our carnal appetites, if you will, our bodily appetites, our bodily desires under control. And we put them in a properly ordered worldview where we say that, properly speaking, things of the soul take precedence over things of the body. It's important that we understand that because it also helps us to understand this second point of fasting, which is that it helps to ward off demons and drive us into holiness. St. Basil the Great called the fasting one of the greatest weapons that we have against the demons. And certainly when I talk to exorcists, they often talk about the importance of fasting. Christ himself talked about the importance of fasting for warding off certain types of demons. Why is that? Well, again, if we think about this hierarchy of goods, where we say spiritual goods take precedence over material goods, we can begin to understand that because the demons tend to operate in the material world. Our sins usually come through the material world. So by operating and focusing on things of the spiritual world, well, of course, we're going to ward off the demonic attacks because the spiritual world is where things are properly ordered. The material world is where things are fallen and in disarray. So if we're focusing on those things of heaven, what we realize is the demons have no authority, no power there. If we're focusing on things on earth, we know that the earth is where the demons were cast into. And so, of course, they're going to have power and influence here on earth. So when we think about the purpose of fasting for warding off the demons, what we're really talking about is saying, hey, if I've got this properly ordered relationship and my primary focus is on the truths of spiritual things, of heavenly goods, well, the demons aren't able to operate in that territory. However, if we don't do any kind of fasting and we're solely focused on the material goods of this world, we give the demons that chance to operate. Finally, fasting has a penitential aspect to it. It's a way of making up, if you will, for previous excesses when we've perhaps indulged too much in things of the material world. It becomes important for us to recognize that, that there are times when probably all of us have overindulged in material things, become too focused on carnal desires, and lost sight of those spiritual goods. As a way of making amends for that, fasting is an important practice because it helps us to remember that, hey, yes, these material goods are in fact good, and in many cases important, but there are greater things, namely these spiritual goods. And so as we enter into Lent, it becomes important for us to engage in this practice of fasting. I want to say one more thing about entering into this season of fasting. We have to do it with that sense of creating a properly ordered relationship with God. So often I hear Catholics speak, and it sounds to me like they're coming at it from a sense of pride. For example, somebody saying, like, I'm going to give up coffee for Lent, and I'm going to do so because I want to see if I can do it. I want to see what I'm made of. That almost reeks of pride rather than establishing a properly ordered relationship with God. And therefore, that kind of fasting is really to be avoided. But when we say, hey, I'm going to give up coffee because I'm recognizing that there are things more important in my life than coffee, and I'm going to use my focus, and I'm going to intently use it to focus on these spiritual goods rather than coffee, well, then go at it because then 
you're seeking that properly ordered relationship with God.